Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. And if you haven't subscribed already, there's a red button, should be on the right side of your screen. You click that, you subscribe, and right next to it, there's a little bell icon. And when you click the bell icon, it turns on notifications. So when you get an email, it says, ta-da, Eric posted a new video. And you can watch it right away as it's uploaded. Also, give a thumbs up in this video for the effort of my production. And go to facebook.com slash hamradioconcepts. Leave a like there and follow along. So in this video, we're going to continue and close to the end on my little mini-series I started. I started with HF bands one video at a time. We started at 10 meters, went to 12 meters, 15 meters. And for a lot of new licensed hams, even the seasoned professionals has told me, wow, these videos are really packed with some good information that I could use. And then I did 200, uh, 2 meters, and now we're on to 220 megahertz, or the 1.25 meter band, or the 135 centimeter band, or the 222 hertz, megahertz band. You know, there's a lot of names for this band, and I've had questions over the years. People said, Eric, I don't really hear anybody talk about 220, or what's on 220? Why doesn't my radio do 220? Should I buy a 220 radio? How does 220 propagate? Well, let's get into it and just kind of give you an overview of the band, what you can expect to find. I'm not discouraging you from getting into this band, but my thoughts are, as a newly licensed operator that you may or may not be, I would not shoot for 220 as your very first band. You may get discouraged thinking, wow, I bought a radio, it's sitting in my truck every day, it's dead, there's nobody on it. So 220 has a place, and I invite anybody who has any information or experiences or networks running on 220, please leave a comment below in the video and share your experience so other people that watch this can see it. Yes, there is 220 out there, but I'm going to say, if you have a repeater network in Texas that may have 70 or 80 repeaters throughout Texas. You probably have a 220 here and a 220 there sprinkled in that may or may not be cross-linked into a 440 machine. So let's get into 220 and show you a couple radio options that are available today on the market so you can get onto the 220 megahertz band. Looking at the U.S. Amateur Radio Bands chart from the ARRL, as we have in the past videos, I have 1.25 meters circled in yellow here. Now, the 222 megahertz band spans from 222 to 225 megahertz, novice, tech, general, advanced, and extra, all having the same operating privileges with novice limited to 25 watts. This is where all your amateur traffic is. And I always get a question about this orange square, and they said, What's there? What is a fixed digital message forwarding system that is nowhere else in any band but 220? Well, 219 to 220 is um, used on a limited secondary basis for nothing more than a digipeter. That's what fixed digital message forwarding systems are, a bunch of fancy words for a digipeter. Now, in 1981, I think starting in 81, they have the AMTS, which was the Automated uh, maritime telecommunications service amts and that was using this portion here for basically voice and data but you know relaying digital traffic from one source to another with a digipeter in between basically in a nutshell if you're familiar with aprs or two meter packet you'll know what a digipeter is and that's pretty much what they're doing there again on a limited secondary basis not available in certain regions like uh, region one um, or region three. I mean, with the exception of Somalia and region one, I mean, it's, it's secondary here. So you got to see if you're really going to be using that, but for your best interest, your amateur traffic is from 222 to 225. Now I know there are some China radios that boast they have 220 capability and they actually span well across 219 and 225. And you may need to be careful on where you're transmitting. And if you're looking for contacts, it'll be up in the amateur portion. Now, green and red, as we talked about on these other bands, shows RIDI and data, phone and image. You can do sideband, FM, CW, EME, moon bounce, uh, ATV, all kinds of stuff here across the band. So it's not limited uh, to certain sections. There are repeater inputs and outputs and designated calling frequencies or simplex frequencies for you to use to make contacts. So make sure you get the appropriate band plan from the ARRL to find out where those frequencies are. 
here from the ARRL. You can see just a little bit of a breakdown here of, you know, propagation beacons, EME, where they're operating, weak signal, FM repeater inputs, FM simplex. So there is, you know, different areas here. And generally, we'll talk about radios in a second. Like I said, generally, you're going to need a transverter if you want to do EME or uh, sideband calling, you know, uh, sideband or CW. You're going to need a transverter because finding something like a 220 megahertz sideband CW rig is going to be very hard to find and probably a lot of money. I'm sure somebody out there manufactures one, maybe, but transverter is your best option for the cheapest. If I type into Google 220 megahertz antenna, I immediately get some results about different sites or people building or selling 220 megahertz antennas. There are antennas out there. If I go to eBay and type it in, there are some antennas here, J poles, mobile antennas, base antennas that'll cover 1.25 meters. So again, the antennas are there. But what about radios? What kind of radio? Let me show you a couple radios that I have had in the past that did 220 and some that I've checked out on video. Now, in the past, there were some discrepancies with FCC allocations, and that's why the Japanese uh, manufacturers really didn't focus on 220 megahertz. And there were some radios, though, that did have it, and typically... Um, when you had a radio that had 220 in it, it was usually lower power. Let's start on one of the ones that one of my very first radios I had, besides the Radio Shack HTX202, which was a beast. Um, I had a VX6R, and this radio was a Yaesu, and it, I've had a lot of Yaesu radios. Uh, this radio was dual band, 144 or 430, 5 watts. But then you see right here it said 220 megahertz for US version, and that was 1.5 watts. Now, did I use that for two meter, or 220 at all and make contact? No. But it was there. Then I had the VX7R. I dreamed of this radio when it was new. I had to have it, and I did buy it. I bought the silver model. And um, so it was an awesome submersible radio. had a magnesium case. And for the time, it was really impressive. This was a quad band, and it had 2 meters, 6 meters, 70 centimeters, and 220. And 6 meters, it would actually do AM. It was pretty cool. So... Uh, 220, again, 1.5 watts. Did I use that to make a contact on 220? No, but it was an awesome rig. Then I had the VX8R, which um, was similar to the VX7R, but it added a few features where you can hook up GPS to it uh, for APRS, as well as a uh, packet data cable interface and such like that. That also had 1.5 watts at 220. Did I use the VX8R for 220? No. The VX8GR, one of my favorite handhelds, that was with the first uh, built-in GPS on the radio, uh, first EAC that had that. And it was cool. It had dual band, um, but it did have 1.25 meters, and I think it only had 300 milliwatts, 1.25 meters, uh, on this radio. Did I uh, use two, 220 on this radio? No, but it did have it. Then I had the VX8DR. Yes, I was a junkie for these handhelds, because at the time I didn't didn't have a vehicle, and I didn't have, uh, you know, uh, radio really set up at the house back when. So VX8DR was great. I had APRS GPS in my pocket. It was cool. Had all that stuff and, you know, had 220 on it. Did I use it? No. Now, in the later years, like the Ushan or Uxan or Wushan, however you want to pronounce that, um, KG uv 8 t for example, does have a tri-band. It has 144, 220, and 440. And it does have uh, 220 on it. And I think it ranges from like 220 to 260 megahertz. So you can now China. It seems like China is the real only one that's producing radios that do 2 meters and 220. Um, there's many models of these Ushans. And these radios are actually really good uh, for a Chinese radio. They're far better than a Bofeng. And they, they do hold up. I've had several of them. I had the one that had full duplex with crossband repeat in it. And um, never use a 220 on mine, but uh, certain models have 220, some have 6 meters. So the Ushan radios did uh, do include it. This is one uh, that I made a video on from Luton, the LT425UV. This was actually marketed as quad band, and of course 300 to 350 or whatever that was on there was practically useless in the U.S. So I called it a tri band, and it did have 144, 440, and it had. 220 on it it has now the thing with this is it did a full 25 watts 
on 220. So this radio ran a little hot, but uh, gave me good audio reports, and it did have a full 25 watts out on 220. That was pretty impressive. So you can get one of these radios, I think it was like 130 bucks or 140 bucks for all that in there and jump on 220 with a Chinese radio. And one I've never had was the Anytone, uh, I think this is the 5888 Mark II, I think. And this one does have, uh, you can see here on the left side, you can do uh, 144 and 220 or 220. Or on the right, 144 and 440. So you can do 1.25 meters on the left side. I'm not exactly sure of the power output, but Anytone, there's a few of those radios out there. Uh, Anytone, but you can see that it seems that China is the only one that's focusing on 220. So maybe that's a good thing because you don't want to dump $400 into a radio to get on a band that may not give you any results, or you're wanting to set up your own network of 220 and you want to get on there as cheap as possible and get your friends on there and have your own little band that really won't have a lot of people on there. Not a lot of interference from other repeaters or uh, desensing. For... Here's a good example. Let's say you had a couple radios that did do 220 and you were at a ham fest. All right. Maybe something like this more practical for the day. You can get on 220 and, you know, if you've ever been to Orlando or Dayton ham fest, sometimes, boy, it gets crowded now even on D-Star and DMR on simplex frequencies. And you got people next to you transmitting to their loved ones or friends and it's desensing your radio. Think about 220. You can get a couple of inexpensive Chinese 220 radios and be at Hamfest, and I guarantee you will find nobody on there that's going to be on that same band. So that's a possibility, you know, having a repeater, not for private and encrypted communications, but something that isn't really out there being flooded with a bunch of other traffic. And being that it's less used, it's going to be a lot quieter. So 220 may have a use out there after all. I mentioned this in the 2 meter video about a transverter. Now, the radios I just showed you were for FM only. And if you wanted to do something like CW or sideband, transverterstore.com, which I've yet to play with one of these, but uh, Johnny at Signal Search on his YouTube video did show one. And they do make them for different frequencies. So you can get one 222 to 28 megahertz, which means you use any 10 meter radio that would go from 28 to 32 megahertz or 26 to 30 would probably be more likely. 26 to 30 megahertz and it would come out on 220 with an appropriate antenna that you build or buy and you'd have sideband using a 10 meter radio. And this is probably your most affordable uh, option for sideband or CW on 220. And, you know, basically if you're on 26 megahertz on your HF rig, you're going to be coming out 222 and if you're on 29 megahertz you're gonna be coming out 225 so that's how a transverter works more information can be found online but something like this would probably be your best bet and there are some other people making transverters for more money these seem to be more affordable i'm waiting to get one uh, for two meters and play around with it and uh, that might be your uh, best option for 222 megahertz on sideband or cw a fun fact did you know now there is still over-the-air broadcast television. Yes, it's all digital, but check this out. I got Once the series is done, I got videos coming up that will directly relate to these frequencies that we're talking about in these different videos. Over-the-air TV is digital now, and you can see VHF, low VHF, high. Check it out. Six meters is right around channel two. Just under channel two is where six meters is. Your VHF high portion would be... Uh, you know, two meters is out of this, but 220 is just above channel 13. And in the past, certain systems with the FCC and other radio networks, they were concerned that 220 band would interfere with the adjacent channel 13 on television. You know, may have some interference there. So that was something to consider in the band plan. But see, uh, TV stations... Uh, typically are out of the ham spectrum and, uh, you know, just below uh, ham spectrum, just below VHF low or just above VHF high. So something to consider. But as I said, in the future here, very shortly, I got some videos that will just really put some money in your pockets instead of paying for cable every month. I'll break it down and show you exactly how over the air digital TV works, how to optimize for the best experience. And yes, you can get like 30 or 40 
full HD channels. But that's just a sneak peek. Stay tuned for that. And that's about all I could say on 220, you know. Again, this is one of our bands. So I don't want to discourage anybody from using it, but it would take quite a Congress to get everybody to switch to 220. You know, it's just not going to happen. There are reasons 220 did not get popular with different uh, commercial gear not being manufactured for 220. There are reasons that 220 just didn't take off, and you can read more about it online. But in a nutshell, 220 would propagate probably just as good as 2 meters would with less of a noise. You know, in between 2 meters and 70 centimeters, you may have a whole different realm if you want to do some long-distance contacts on sideband or EME moon bounce. In fact, there are some people on the forums that say they use 220 on EME for scheduled, of course, to schedule somebody because they know nobody else is using it. They know that the noise is low there. There's nothing else really interfering like there is on 2 meters. So 220 has a place in the spectrum. It is our band to use. I encourage you to use it if you want to. As a newcomer, I wouldn't devote your life into 220. But thanks for watching, and like I said, coming up soon will be some videos about the TV spectrum and how I put more money in my pocket cutting the cord and getting off of commercial broadcast TV and going to over-the-air digital HD broadcasts and pay nothing every month for TV. And that's right in there along with VHF, UHF. So I hope to teach you a lot about that. 7-3, thanks for watching. Subscribe. More on the way from KJ4YZI.